Hello, dear colleagues. I'm glad to see you here today, and I hope your day was fine and even will be even better. Today we continue a series of our regular webinars devoted to the channel system in traditional Chinese medicine, and we are going to discuss spleen channel today. Please let me know on chat if the sound is okay. Thank you, Susan. Okay. So, let's continue then. Let me remind you that uh, this webinar is based on the works of Vedapal's team specialist, PhD and Master of Metaphysical Arts of Hanava Institute, a reflexologist and a specialist of traditional Chinese medicine, Sergei Kasintsev, one of the authors of Vedapal's acupuncture extension. And Sergei Kasintsev will be glad to answer any questions if you have some. My name is Anastasia and I'm manager of technical support team of Vedapal's company. And I'm here to voice his ideas today. Today we are going to discuss spleen channel itself, the main characteristics, projection area and functional use, as well as PowerPoints of this channel and methods of passing through this channel, methods of activating biological active points of this channel. Sometimes you can see that uh, such channel, spleen channel, can be mentioned in literature as spleen and pancreas channel. And uh, if we are talking about Chinese tradition, then uh, it is exactly spleen, channel of spleen. But according to the terms of modern European tradition and European medicine, all functions of this system, they feed, uh, they march uh, to the pancreas. Uh, so that's why sometimes it is called spleen and pancreas channel. Spleen as a traditional term and uh, pancreas as an European point of view. So it's quite equal spleen or spleen and pancreas channel. It is the same for this channel, for this system. In Chinese, it is called Tzu Tai In Pin Zin. You can see it on your screen now. The first part, Tzu, means that uh, it is connected to our legs. And uh, exactly this channel starts at uh, the big toy. Then goes Tai In, and it's an indication to the energetic axis In. The next part is P. It is spleen in Chinese. And Zin, as you know, it is channel or channel meridian. There are 21 biological active points along this channel. And traditionally talking about energy and uh, energy in axis, uh, we should say that this particular system belongs to Tai Yin level of energy. And it means that it contains a maximum of energy. And uh, spleen and lungs work together here. So this energy axis tie in is formed by lungs and spleen. You know that all in channels accumulate energy and that's why sometimes they are supposed to be more vital, more of importance and more of significance than young organs. Traditional Chinese medicine pay even more attention to working with in organs because of this function. Because uh, they are exactly the organs that can uh, accumulate protective health stock. And it's very important in long-term uh, perspective if we'd like to prolong our um, healthy life.
So they accumulate and they collect the main energy of, for all of our body. Energy of spleen is connected to the earth element. Uh, by the way, the previous system that we were discussing uh, during previous webinar, stomach channel also belongs to this element. And together, spleen channel and stomach channel, they can regulate energy of our nutrition. Mm, by the way, this is the point that um, often meets negative uh, external influences because we we need to use food every day and it's very regular part of our life that's why the quantity and quality of our food is very important and can influence the whole energy and the whole energy in all systems of our body According to Ayurvedic tradition, spleen channel belongs to Kapha category. It means that um, it can regulate humidity and dryness, can regulate this balance between humidity and dryness in the body. And it is very sensitive to moisture, very sensitive to humidity. It works together with kidney to balance our fluids and they are responsible for it together with kidney. We come closer to main characteristic of uh, today's channel, of a spleen channel. In China, it is often called the second mother. You can see it here. It means that it is very important channel. Uh, the first mother, it is kidney, because they collect the energy that a person gets from his parents. And the second mother is the spleen channel, because it also can accumulate our energy. You can see it's very important because it is uh, responsible for such options as food digestion and sea accumulation. It means that it nourishes all inner organs in our body and can accumulate energy of nourishment and normally if person doesn't use any special energy accumulating techniques such as Qigun trainings or other um, energetic arts of accumulating energy. If person doesn't do anything special, then the main energy he gets is the energy coming with food, nutrition energy. And the main organ that can accumulate this energy is the spleen, exactly. It is responsible for accumulation and for adoption of C. And in a general sense, it works together with energy of breathing and energy of psycho-emotional sphere. Because we consume not only food, but also information we can say that we consume our air, oxygen from the air, and uh, it depends on this system whether we can digest what we consumed or not. Uh, so you can see that due to these options, we can use biological active points of the spleen channel almost in any nosology. So it means in any condition, in any disorders. But pay attention, in some acute cases, you shouldn't start with a spleen channel. 
uh, in some acute cases it is necessary to diffuse them firstly and then you can work also with biological active points of this channel but if uh, your patient has a chronic condition some chronic disorder then you can use biological active points of the spleen channel even in the first treatment in the first prescription it accumulates the energy and influences our blood because qi and blood are connected tightly in what direction qi comes uh, in the same direction our blood comes and if a person has a lack of blood circulation it means that he has a bad energy level in corresponding organs and in a physical level our blood is a carrier for C energy. If we imagine that our blood and its cell elements are like a small cars, then the C energy is the main force that manages them. It uh, directs them and uh, all of their directions depend on this um, C element. So, if uh, there is any congestion, for example, patients with uh, varicosity or uh, hemorrhoids um, usually have a congestion, then it's necessary to influence biological active points in the area of congestion. Coming back to spleen, we should say that it influences not only digestive but also breathing and reproductive and even cardiovascular system. It opens through the mouth, you can see. And it is the first system that is responsible for our blood and for what our blood includes on the cell level. You know that there are red blood cells which bring oxygen and white blood cells are called sometimes uh, leukocytes. Uh, they are responsible for our immunity, for our immune system. There are also some macrophages uh, so, the spleen, it works with these elements and it influences these elements, spleen channel, I mean spleen channel's energy, and it can, um, it can enhance our immunity. That's why it is very often used in uh, hematological, hemat hematological disorders and in conditions such as anemia because such conditions uh, they are often connected to chronic disorders in which uh, leukocytes, uh, these white cells of our body uh, have a lack of functioning and uh, when our immunity is decreased so biological active points of this channel will be good to use. Talking about mirror of this channel, uh, we should say that it's completion and leaps. And it's very important to pay attention to the view of leaps, to their color and to their volume, because they reflect the condition of the spleen channel. And if there are close-lipped mouth by the patient, um, it means that uh, there is some tension in the system because uh, lips closure line is very important and uh, it should be curving. It shouldn't be like a direct line. Direct line here means tension in the system of digestion and uh, our spleen channel is tightly connected to these processes. 
So, uh, in these cases, it's recommended, uh, along with the treatment on biological active points, to use some um, external uh, things, like just try to trying to change uh, our habits and trying to change uh, the way we are using our face. So, try to make this line not direct, try to relax this zone, uh, and uh, it's also one of the way of influencing altogether with traditional treatment on biological active points. Oh, her hello, dear Sayed, nice to see you here today. So, we are continue. The taste which is connected to this system is sweet taste. You know, it's very popular taste, and a lot of people like sweet taste, like sweeties, because it is connected to energy, and if we are consume right sweet products, natural sweet products, that which are useful, then uh, this sweet taste will give us a lot of energy. If we use wrong products, then uh, there will be some negative consequences, such as overweight and a lack of C in all our channel meridian system. And in European tradition, people often say that, oh, this person eats too much sweeties. That's why he has overweight. In Chinese system, um, overweight uh, is uh, often explained in the terms of a syndrome of lack of energy, lack of energy syndrome. And uh, it, in this case, it is recommended to check the diet of a patient and to check the products that he uses, because probably the product is not so bad, but maybe it was a lasting food or, you know, shelf-stable food, or maybe it was frozen several times, or probably the person can use some ready-to-cook food often. Sure, it's necessary to avoid such things, because it's not very good for our energy exchange. And in this case, sure, it is recommended practically for every patient to use more of fresh vegetables, more of greens, and even if the person doesn't have a garden or possibility to grow it, it's quite easy, for example, trying to grow some green on a window sill because it's very useful and in many books on phytotherapy and diet, there are some mentionings about useful plants. And these books say that it's necessary to consume bloomy, fresh plants, because this part um, of plant with a flower it has uh, the maximum level of energy. It is somehow connected also to tradition of uh, consuming germs of wheat. Mm, traditional Chinese medicine often uses it uh, to raise the level of energy because it's really rich with energy. If we are talking about emotions, we need to mention that too much of doubtfulness depresses the spleen, and it makes harm to it. Also, it can bring some negative consequences to our digestion process. So, if person is not able to get distracted from some, from some problems, he has, then as a result, his energy uh, will feel a lack of, and uh, it will be not good for the 
whole energy system. It will be bad for digestion, for immunity. As a result, where some disorders of sleeping appear and some kind of insomnia can take place as a result. On a psychological level, it is connected to our will and feeling of our inner axis, feeling of our inner center. Sometimes people say, oh, he has a spin, like this feeling of uh, inner centrum. And people who have an excess of energy in this system, then uh, probably they may have a tension uh, as a result. It is necessary to work with it because tension and excess also is not positive for us. If we are talking about balance, balance is very important because uh, the energy is necessary for any process in our body, but it should be balanced in all systems here. We are coming next and are going to discuss power points of a spleen channel. There are points of five elements in our body and each channel has its own points of five elements and we can work with it. We can put particular tasks within these biological active points. But to do it, we need to understand their functions and their connections to organs. If we are talking about the spleen, its element will be the earth. And you know that the earth is the center of all other elements. And to strengthen this, this feeling of inner axis, of inner centrum, we need to use biological active points of the earth element. And first of all, points of the earth element on the channel of the earth. The spleen channel is the earth channel. And you see, the first point is RP1. It is wood element. But if we are talking about the earth point, it will be the point number three, RP3. Uh, you know, you remember that this nomenclature, RP, is connected to French tradition and it is from Rien Pancreas, so the name of this channel in French. If you see that uh, somewhere it will be mentioned as SP, like spleen and pancreas in English. It will be just the same. Let me ask you one question. Uh, do you remember which point belongs to the earth category on the channel of the stomach? We were discussing it and it's a very popular point. It is often mentioned in sources, in the internet. Please, you can... Okay, yes, that's right. Thank you. <laughs> Very fast answer. <laughs> exactly, it is point uh, number 36, point E36 on the stomach channel. And sometimes it's also called the point of perennial youth, of internal youth, and it's very important for us to know such points, because they are main points, um, and sure, the best way just to remember all of them, to use it in practice, because you can make some lists with mentioning of the points and their effects, but uh, if you see the condition of a patient, and uh, if you work with it, with his symptoms, then it will be very easy for you to remember these main points, to work with them later. 
So, point of wood element, it is point number one on this channel. Point of a fire is point number two. Metal element number five and water element point number nine. We should mention that first three points always go one by one. And firstly here we start from the point number three. You should uh, find it uh, on the big toy. Also, such points as uh, point number eight is very important because it is an interspace point or gap point. It has an analgetic influence and it reflects how energy flows in this channel. And if this point is painful during diagnosis, if it is painful when pressing it, it means that there are some hurdles for energy flow in the spleen channel. Such points as more and shoe points also are very good for diagnosis. You can see in this system, for this system, it will be F13 and V20. And we'll discuss it a bit later, their location and how to work with them. Uh, also, let me say that low point, which is point number four here, works as a point which gives energy. And the next point, E42, it takes this energy. It is located on the stomach channel. Talking about point uh, which we call element in the element point, then uh, here it will be point number three, our P point, because its element coincides with the channel's element. That's why it is element in the element point. So, shoe and more points. Shoe point, V point number 20, is located uh, one and a half soon from posterior middle line between spinous processes of the 11th and 12th thoracic vertebrae. It's easy to find it. To do it, you need to touch your back and uh, to feel the last trip. It is connected to the 12th thoracic vertebra. And just above the last three point number 20, the point that we need to find. In China, it is called P Shu. It means P as spleen in Chinese and Shu is a point of Shu category. The next point, more point, which is responsible for in energy of this channel, is located uh, on the liver channel. It is point number 13. It is called Jian Men in China, and it shows us uh, the condition uh, it, it gives us possibility to work with all so-called Jian organs. Jian, uh, it means that all organs can be divided according to their belonging to yin or yang category. And all yang organs, uh, they are called hollow or empty organs. All yin organs in Chinese tradition are dense. 
or giant organs. So, to influence all our giant organs, we can work with this biological active point. To find it, please try to find the free end of the 11th rib. There is one useful advice how to find it easily. You just uh, can look at the screen now. On the right side, there is a picture. And to find this point, you need to take your red, uh, to take your right hand and put it on your left shoulder. Your arm should be relaxed and you should find the place where your elbow is situated in this position. It will be the area of our point. So when you make a palpation of costal margin and it is the way how you can find point number 13 on the liver channel. And it's important point because it can influence not only the spleen energy, but also you can influence any dense organ. So it means you can work with in energy of all channels in the system of channels according to traditional Chinese medicine. Let's uh, look now at biological active point of our today's topic, of our today's channel, the spleen and pancreas channel. You can see, we walk with our feet. The first point, point number one, is called in by in Chinese, and uh, it is connected to wood element. It is located near the nail root of big toy. On your screen, you can see it uh, in a bubble. It's uh, really comfortable to influence this biological active point with your nail, but then pressing, please be careful because skin is very thin here. And to you can start uh, with 30 pressings when working with this point. Then you should move along the big toy until you meet uh, a bone. You will feel such a bone, sometimes it's uh, quite big, and just between this bone, where will be point number second, oh sorry, point number two, the second point. It is connected to the fire element, and it is called Dadu in Chinese. Oh, by the way, would you be so kind, please, to write on chat? What is the fun of fire heat channel? Will it be tonic or sedative for the spleen? How do you think? Yes, that's right. You are absolutely right. It will be tonic. Because you should also remember this Usin circle. Which shows, uh, which shows us interconnections between five basic elements. And uh, tonic points always come first, uh, according to this circle. So if we are comparing points, points uh, that come first, they will be tonic for others. And uh, you remember that the spleen channel is a channel of the earth element. So, you are absolutely right. If you need to influence and to improve a flow of energy in the spleen channel, you can use biological active point of a fire element here to be a tonic influence. The next point is number three. It is located a bit 
Next, just next to the outstanding bone. It is yuan point, and you can influence all processes connected to digestion, breathing, immunity, um, working with these points. It is the core point for this system. That's why it's quite important to know about it and to work with it. You can see on your screen its location. Point number four, it is a low point in this system and it means that it transfers energy from the spleen channel to the stomach channel. It is connected to the point E42, as we mentioned earlier. And to find it, you need to palpate your bone just after the point number three. Uh, to go uh, until the transition of the bone to the bone's head. And where will be the point number four? Uh, this point is necessary when we need to disperse some some uh, big stock of energy. So sometimes patients can have painful syndromes uh, along the course of the spleen channel, and in this case, he will feel a, a lot. He will feel too much tension, too much energy in this channel. So to dispel, to disperse it, you can use point number four, low point. Point number five is connected to the metal element and it will have a sedative effect. Also, not very complicated to find it. To do it, you should start with your inner ankle. You should find your inner ankle, feel it, and then just like, like uh, to make a sliding along the diagonal, and where you will feel a forcer. This point will be located in this hollow, in this fossa. It has one unique effect. It can stimulate and strengthen our connective tissue. Sometimes it's necessary to work with connective tissue, then it is weak in patients. For example, Modern teenagers are often quite tall, but at the same time very slim, and they can suffer from uh, from problems with connective tissue. It can be very weak in these persons. Also, people with a syndrome of vertebral artery have such uh, problems and in their cases it also can be a very effective point to struggle their dizziness because people with this syndrome they feel not very good when they change their position, make some balls or they can even feel signs of vertigo just in head rotation. So in all these cases, we are talking about some lack of functioning of connective tissues, and we can use this point, number five, to influence it. Point number six doesn't belong to the list of five elements, but at the same time, it's a very common point, and you can always find it in many acupuncture prescriptions because it's a point of general effect. Sometimes it is also called a group low point of three in 
connected to our legs. In China, it is a bit shorter. It is called like Sun in Zhao. It is located. It is located uh, in the following way. When you are searching for this point, you should move along the back edge of your tibia and uh, on the shin from inner side, free to upper the inner ankle, you can find this point. Uh, I remind you that free tsun are equal to the width of your four fingers from index finger to a small finger. So you just take your palm and put it and just over your fingers you will feel the edge of a tibia. So it is the way how to find this point. This point can influence uh, all in channels connected to our legs. So they are spleen channel, kidney channel and liver channel. And sometimes these channels are called uh, the most important from the point of view of vitality in traditional Chinese medicine because they are responsible for our blood circulation in pelvic organs and it's very essential for us. Uh, if there are some painful feelings in this area, uh, then in women it can mean some congestion and here we should think of some possible disorders from the point of view of uh, gynecology. So working uh, with these prescriptions using these biological points can be really effective in such cases, but please be sure that you don't use uh, this point during menstruation because it can provocate some um, abundant uh, bleeding. Just to avoid it, please be sure that you don't use it in periods. Next point is point number eight. And you can see it is located upper along the shin. To find it, uh, you should ask your patient to see it and then devote the distance from inner ankle to the lower edge of kneecap in three parts. So devote this distance in three parts and our point will be located on the border between the upper and the middle thirds. Talking in terms of measurement, it will be located uh, five tune lower than the upper edge of kneecap. So the leg should be bent at an angle of 90 degrees and then along the posterior edge of the tibia you are working with a point. In China it is called Di Zi, which can be translated as uh, the earth axis or uh, divine strength of the earth. It can regulate um, our energy and our blood and it has very strong effect. So it can be used in general syndromes of lack of energy and in all conditions connected to disorders of blood circulation um, and in all disorders connected to quantity or quality of uh, elements of our blood.
The next point is point number nine. It is located upper at the lower edge the lower edge of the epicondyle of tibia. It is called in main tuan, which means responsible for in of the whole channel. It belongs uh, to the water element. And you should know that water element is the most in element among all. It has uh, a little bit controversial effect, so it can help to restore in any in syndrome when there is an energy congestion. So, if uh, functioning of the organ is not enough, is not uh, proper enough, then we can use it, especially if the condition is connected to blood circulation or condition of our digestion organs. The spleen and pancreas channel. Now we should say a few words about ties of the spleen channel. If we are talking about uh, the yin yang idea, uh, then we should say that it is connected to the stomach channel. And uh, the stomach shares its energy with the spleen channel uh, by means of the point number 40. You can see on your screen. It gives energy to the point number 3 of the spleen and pancreas channel. And if there is an excess of energy, some overstock of energy in the spleen channel, then it can send it to the stomach channel through the point uh, number four and uh, to the point E42. But we should mention that the effect will be uh, not a long term. Effect, will, effect here will be very short. That's why if we need to change some energy flow here, it's better to use the method of passing this through this channel and uh, tonic point and point, which we call the element in the element point in the spleen channel. Talking about passing of a channel, traditionally we'll discuss it in the end, in the practic part of our webinar. Now we should say about connections of this channel to others in Ayurvedic tradition. You can see on your screen the spleen and pancreas channel is connected to the stomach channel as well as to the triple heater and pericardium channels. And all these four channels belong to Kapha category. In terms of European medicine, it will be mostly about our uh, endocrine sphere, endocrine system. Also, these channels are responsible for for fluids in our body and for their circulation in our body, as well as uh, for hormonal reactions, but in general for all that is connected to body fluids. And you remember that it is mostly about Kapha functions all that's connected to fluids. So if necessary to use 
some biological active points of this meridian, please remember that the spleen channel will be the most important among these four meridians connected to Kapha Dosha. According to the rules of pulse diagnosis, we also need to mention the spleen channel because uh, if we compare it to the liver channel, which is also connected to the spleen channel, then the role of the spleen channel will be of more significance. Of, it will be more important comparing to liver channel. But we are working together and if there is a lack of energy then oh, you can use uh, the liver system to get this, uh, this energy that you need and to do it you need to work with low point of the liver channel low, uh, low point number five to send energy and you are in point on the channel of the spleen which is point number three, and which is also UI point, to get this energy. It's a good method, but nowadays uh, it's not possible to use it in any cases, uh, because unfortunately due to a modern lifestyle, liver of a modern person suffers often, and it feels uh, a great loss because of a um, not proper lifestyle, so it's not always possible to share the liver's energy just due to the absence of this energy in the channel. Uh, so it's not a rare case that, that often a patient can have even less energy in the system of liver than in the system of the spleen. To check it, you need to pay attention to the organs pulse for example you've got such uh, indications in Veda pulse software if you need you may open this tab and just compare the level of energy just to check how the level of energy corresponds how it can be compared in these energy systems and channels Talking about interconnections between, uh, between the channel and uh, the surrounding inner organs, we should say the following. The main channel, as well as uh, tendus muscular channel of the spleen, goes uh, from the big toy, then it continues along the inner surface of a hip, and if you see any changes in this area, then you can use biological active points of the spleen channel because uh, it's a sign that for it's a sign for using biological active points of this channel. Uh, what it can be, for example, the most obvious, it can be some varicosity on the inner surface of the shin and uh, on the inner surface of hip. So if you see something here, you can use biological active points of this channel in corresponding area. But please be careful in the area of the inner part of the hip because there are a lot of vessels there. So talking about uh, tendus muscular channel of the spleen. We should say that uh, it goes along the central line to the navel and to the area of solar plexus. All biological active points of the spleen channel are located a bit aside from navel here and then they uh, raise in the direction of our ribs. 
you remember that all meridians are symmetric, there is a symmetry, and they are located uh, on both sides of the body. Here on the screen you can see it only from one side, just for you to, easy, to see it easily for the first time during the webinar. But remember that uh, there are branches on both parts of our body. If we are talking uh, about uh, tendus muscular channel, uh, then uh, it is located on the level of our, uh, it is located under the skin and it is the most superficial level. Uh, it is connected to some, uh, to some cellular tissue under our skin. But if we are talking uh, about biological active points of the main meridian of the spleen, then we should say that they are located uh, a bit deeper and uh, they are located approximately at the level of our muscles. Okay, Susan, I can see you have a question. Thank you for your question. I think it would be better for us to send your question to uh, the author of a webinar, and then we'll share his answers with you, I think, via email. Thank you for your interest. Uh, meanwhile, let's continue our uh, webinar. And let's talk a little bit more about this picture. When you continue to move along the channel, you are moving from the area of ribs, where we stopped, and then upper in the area of the shoulder, where will be point number 20 in the third intercostal space. It will be located uh, on the anterior line, and in six soon from anterior middle line. Then this channel goes on and uh, goes down. It continues and goes down along the side surface of our chest. Then it goes to the six intercostal area, then uh, there will be point number 21 of the spleen channel. It is the final point of the channel and to find it uh, you can search for the middle of the line of auxiliary area. The tendus muscular meridian goes along the central line until ribs and influences all our muscle systems. If there are any disorders or any painful feelings connected to the area of intercostal spaces, you are recommended to use biological active points of a spleen channel uh, to influence them. Uh, often it can be connected to some breathing disorders, for example, and in this case, the logical active points of a spleen channel are very good also. Talking about uh, reflexology and reflexological zones, according to the system of the hurrying and head, we should mention that uh, they are very similar to the reflex zones of the stomach channel that we discussed. 
these zones are located on the back, a bit lower than our scapula, uh, on the right and on the left. By the way, also these reflex zones are used uh, in the Veda Pulse extension, uh, which is called physiotherapy, and uh, we they were a basic for um, different prescriptions in these modules of Vedapals. So on the back it will be a bit lower than scapula and if we are talking about anterior surface of our body then uh, we are located uh, in the area of our solar plexus or sometimes this area is called a pit of the stomach. This zone is responsible for our pancreas, for its condition. It is located um, just after the navel and then goes uh, to the left uh, hypochondrium. And it looks like uh, half of a ring. Then it goes to our um, spine and uh, uh, it meets uh, the level of Shu and Mo points that we were discussing today. What else can we do uh, working with uh, energy of this channel? Sure, we can influence projection areas on the face. And the main projection area on the face connected to the spleen and pancreas channel, it will be the area of our lips. That's why the brightness of lips, uh, their color, all these signs are very important for us for right diagnosis. Please pay attention uh, to the moisture of lips and to any wrinkles if there are some. Uh, in a perfect condition, a healthy lips should be bright, a little bit uh, moisture and without any wrinkles. And uh, if you see some wrinkles just above the upper lip, like here on the screen, you can see here and here, uh, when it can be an indication for stomach ulcer or duodenum ulcer, so please pay attention to this zone when working with diagnosis. Also, the spleen channel system uh, is connected uh, to our nose because all elements of the earth category, uh, they are connected with the nose. And especially with the dorsum of the nose, nasal arc, like just the back of the nose. And here, if there are any disorders of this part, then uh, probably there are two possible reasons. If there are any problems connected to the back side of the nose, whether it can be some disorder connected to our spine, or it can be a sign of disorder connected to our pancreas. And in this case, if you see some uh, signs in this area by a patient, you should ask him uh, what is the, the zone of uh, his problem. But sometimes problems can be in both of these zones. When making such a diagnosis, you can use shoe point, you can use more point, element in the element point, uh, as well as an elgetic point uh, number eight of the uh, spleen and pancreas channel. You remember that uh, male and female projection areas on the face uh, can be a little bit different and if we are talking about men, then this additional specific zone will be on the right angle 
of uh, hair growth and for women it will be the left angle of the hair growth. Pay attention, it's not about point here, it is about a zone. So you should watch the whole zone in this area for any changes and then should remember that this area is connected to the spleen channel. Also don't forget that um, if we are talking about the angle of hair growth then it's not uh, always very evident, very obvious, uh, but you should uh, imagine that there is uh, such a, like a M line, like here, for example, on the screen. Here you see the line of hair growth looks like a M, a little bit, and here it's quite clear, the zone of angle of hair growth, here and here. Uh, but sometimes it can be a little bit circled, look like uh, oval. Then in this case, you should imagine how it would like, it would look like by this patient uh, if there were some angles. So work with the area of uh, angle of hair growth if you need to work with the spleen projection areas on the face. According to the uh, traditional facial diagnosis, uh, which is called Minziang, this area is called uh, like the area of traveling palaces or the area of palaces of traveling. Uh, so if you'd like such tradition, uh, such traditional ideas, uh, then you should pay attention also uh, to your traveling, if there are any signs in this area, and be careful during your business trips. If there are any mm, faults at inner part of your eyebrow, it's also quite common, inner part of eyebrow, somewhere here, then you should remember uh, that if there is only one uh, fold, for example, on the left, or there are two folds, two wrinkles, but the left one um, is uh, more expressed, when um, it says us about uh, some tension uh, in pancreas. If uh, this wrinkle is more expressed on the right, then it is connected to some influences uh, on our liver. We also will be talking about liver later in the series of our webinars when having a webinar about this channel. Now let's go on and we are coming uh, to our practical part, to our practical launch of a small circle of energy circulation. We always recommend to do it before passing of any channels. And to activate any channel, we start to work in this small circle of energy circulation. In China, they say that if you launched uh, this celestial circle, uh, then all diseases uh, will leave, all diseases will go away, like a traditional Chinese proverb. So, it is the first what we do, then uh, generally after that we work with a big celestial circle, which includes uh, 12 meridians. To activate, uh, firstly, the small celestial circle, uh, we start working with a point number three, you can see on your screen, uh, of a channel of small intestine. It is located on the edge of your palm, on your, 
on the rib of your palm. So you start clipping, clipping along the back middle meridian from sacrum along the back in the direction of your head and then to the area of your nose and the upper lip. When we continue and working with the anterior middle meridian uh, by means uh, of uh, point number seven in the lung channel system, it is called Le Dieu in Chinese, except on the lungs channel. So you continue clapping of the anterior middle meridian. Starting from the pubic area, then you go up along the anterior middle line uh, through the chest and then uh, you may clap in, in the area of your throat. Always be careful with your throat, with your neck. Then you go to the mandible and then to the upper lip. And it is recommended uh, in the very end uh, to touch to touch the palate, palate in your mouth with your tongue. So touch the upper palate in the mouth. Uh, like to finish the passing of a small energy circulation circle. After that, you can start working exactly with the channel of the spleen. Start clapping along the curves of biological active points from the big toy on the inner side of it. Uh, by the way, when you are clapping, your claps should make sound. Uh, for example, now I'll do some clapping and I hope you'll be able to hear that. It should be something like that. Uh, so hope you heard that. It should be very rhythmic and um, in a particular zones which are very sensitive, you should be a bit more careful. For example, in the face area, it's possible to use only fingers, not a palm, but uh, along all other parts of our body, it should be such a soundable clapping. So you start from the big toy, then you are going along the inner surface of your foot uh, to the inner ankle, then you raise along the back edge of a tibia in the direction of your knee, then very carefully you go in um, near the inner surface of your hip in the upper third of it, uh, because I mentioned that there are some vessels close to skin, so we should be careful here also. And then uh, we are going to a pubic fold. Then they continue clapping along the area of our stomach. And uh, on the stomach, we should move from the middle line on six tsun aside. And here we continue our passing. You remember we said that uh, in this area there is a more point of a spleen channel. So again, if necessary, you can put your hand uh, on the opposite shoulder and in the place where your elbow is, uh, there will be 
some line going from your public fold to this place, in the direction of this place. Continue clipping. Uh, by the way, uh, channel of the lever is located uh, very close uh, to the spleen channel, exactly in this area. When you should go on and uh, raising up um, along the chest from the outer side uh, of your nipple until the third intercostal space. If necessary, uh, you can always uh, find uh, the particular line of this passing in uh, the depulse acupuncture extension because uh, there are not only different prescriptions, you know, there is also a useful tab uh, which can show you the whole channel. Uh, when you need it, just uh, switch off the nosological filter to see illustration of the biological active points of the whole channel of this course. So, then you continue and from the point number 20 you go to the uh, middle axillary line and then in the sixth intercostal space. So, uh, where is the final point of this channel? Point number 21, 21st point of this channel. Here you can see illustration of, of this final point also. Can be useful for you if you need to find it. Talking about uh, channels activity, we should mention that this channel is active during the whole May and uh, until the 6th of June in European tradition. Also, we need to mention some uh, biorhythmic activities and uh, sometimes it's necessary for us to calculate a particular day and particular hour then some biological point is active when it is open because all biological active points have a time of their maximum activity when they are mostly, um, mostly powerful when they give the maximum response uh, due to influence. So if you need to do it you can use also the Depulse Expert Extension uh, which is called uh, Biorhythms it is connected to the cluster of traditional Chinese medicine extension. Here you can choose a particular day, particular hour, and you will see which biological active points are open in this time and uh, during this day. So you know that the month of activity of the whole channel is May, but also there are some days then uh, particular points are the most powerful during it. If you are interested, you can find it in the biorhythmic extension. Oh, it's another print screen of biorhythmic extension. Uh, for example, it shows us um, also an illustration with a particular biological active point location. So it's uh, a little bit similar to acupuncture extension too. Thank you for your attention. And if you've got any questions, please feel free to ask them now on chat. Be sure you'll get answers. And I hope you liked this webinar. Have a nice evening. Bye.